to this August webinar. Uh, there are research scholars from across Bangalore and elsewhere. There are uh, uh, people from teaching fraternity across Bangalore from elsewhere. And there are students. And then uh, to everyone who have joined here, our students and the students from uh, MICA probably, uh, students of FT I can find here. So to all of you, welcome to this webinar. Uh, we have had uh, three webinars before prior to this. The first of them was uh, 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 given by Professor Udo Wagner from University of Vietnam, followed by the second one by Professor Mithileshwar Zha, the former professor of uh, marketing from IIM Ahmedabad, IIM Bangalore. And then we have had uh, Dr. Ramesh Kumar from IIM Bangalore as well. So this is the fourth one. And uh, we have got some uh, tremendous uh, speakers. We've been getting tremendous speakers. And we have Professor Varsha Jain from uh, Mudra Institute of Communications, Ahmedabad today. Uh, it's a privilege that we have you today, uh, Professor Varsha, amongst us. And uh, let me have a privilege to introduce you to the audience. Professor Varsha Jain is a professor in integrated marketing communications and co chairperson, fellow program in management. It's a doctoral program at uh, Maika. Uh, she is one of the few elite in the areas of teaching and research. Uh, by virtue of her you know, expertise uh, of more than 17 plus years in the field of and teaching and research. So she is, she has reached in fact to this stage in fact. Uh, she has 100 plus publications, both of international and uh, national repute uh, to her credit. She has published a lot of cases, uh, books, and also a lot of research articles at uh, different journals of ABDC repute and A plus journals as well. Uh, she has contributed cases in IV case collections, Emerald Emerging Markets case collections, and she has also contributed a uh, case to the marketing management textbook, uh, 15th edition by Philip Kotler, of course, by invitation. She is a recipient of 20 national and uh, international awards, and uh, she has won a gold medal in research and scholarship. scholarship. She has won a best research uh, researcher of the year in the year 2019 by Center for Education, Growth and Research. It is an initiative by Government of India. She is a visiting guest, visiting scholar and a visiting professor across many universities in USA and of course in India as well. Uh, she teaches in IM Raipur, Trichy and Indoor. She's into advisory board and review committees of many ABDC listed journals. Uh, Professor Jain specializes in uh, consumer behavior, luxury branding, digital marketing, and digital natives. Consumer behavior, a digital native with Professor Jagadish Shet and Professor Skulls. It's an Indian edition. I guess she is on to writing a consumer behavior, a global, global edition. Uh, we welcome you uh, on behalf of IBA, on behalf of a uh, marketing function. So we welcome you to this webinar and uh, over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much for your kind words uh, and the introduction. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be with you all. And um, I always, uh, I was discussing, I always miss that human connect, but I think the digital platforms have also helped us to reach out to uh, different uh, platforms, different communities uh, of, uh, you know, especially from the global academic fraternity. So thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, I think it's a pleasure to be with you all. Uh, so primarily I'll uh, discuss my uh, views, uh, which I'm going to share with you, followed by Q&A. And uh, maybe you can note down your questions and uh, at the end of my presentation, I can take it up. So uh, as you all might have read uh, the book, which we recently came up and uh, which uh, Professor Hecke has mentioned just now about the consumer behavior uh, or digital native. And you all uh, are primarily digital native and we were discussing that this pandemic has actually made everybody a digital native. Uh, some people liked it, some people didn't like it, but there was no choice. Uh, so what I've done is I've actually gone beyond the book and I will be discussing um, something related to what is there in the book, which was before Corona, during Corona and after Corona. And you might be also interested to know what's happening in the future and how to take it up from there. So with that note, uh, because um, 
digital is such an area to be honest with you all uh, where you you need constant evolution it's difficult to cope up with the platforms is difficult to cope up with the digital natives like you all uh, because the behavior is constantly changing and i tell all my students every time especially at my ka that you know uh, it's a constant journey it's a constant research which you have to do on all these people uh, because uh, their attitudes their feeling perception everything changes drastically and that has to be incorporated by the brands so with that thought let me uh, just share some insights on what we have curated at three phases and then uh, we'll take it up from there so uh, yeah so i'm going to discuss the influence of uh, digital media on digital natives uh this is one of uh, the chapter which we wrote on the sixth chapter of the book and i'm extending that further uh, to make it more uh, relatable for you all and we'll see uh, how uh, the transition has gone from the different phases so i'll quickly give you some introductions so then as i was telling you that what was happening before covid 19 during that time and then what is going to happen uh, post uh, covid 19 or corona phase so to start with let me just tell you a very quick um, introduction about the digital natives uh earlier uh, people used to think that uh, you know digital natives uh, are only those people who are young who are into that area where they access the social media platform and digital media uh, but unfortunately digital natives are not only the young people that is what we have redefined in the book as well which is the digital natives are those people irrespective of the age they are the individuals who access the products uh, services online and uh, they usually make search do the comparison evaluation of course the intensity will be higher as we compare it uh, with uh, gen z and y but i think all those people are very important part of uh, the digital natives uh, scenario so that particular uh, road block which was there in the mind of the people i think that has to be changed uh and why digital natives are so important because of these numbers if you see um from 2020 only we have curated the numbers which talks about like 60% of the world's population belong to this category 81% uh, are from the developed nation of course but i think the developing nations are also coming into the forefront uh internet penetration has increased in our country as well as uh, you would know and uh, there's always a 9% growth uh, in this particular category now interestingly what has happened is uh, during this uh, pandemic the entire scenario has changed completely which means that 34% of people have started using uh, these digital channels 67% of them have changed their behavior and they have become more online uh, 73% of people have actually personalize their journey and uh, 26% they have changed uh, completely to the online experience uh, and the strong world of digital so here i would also like to mention we are doing some other studies uh, on the experience part and i was interviewing some of the ceos um, and trying to understand the ecosystem of customer experience they have mentioned that uh, they told me very clearly that the future is going to be more on on off online because people are uh, becoming more uh, efficient in terms of the usage they they want a human intervention but not so much as they used to get it earlier and probably the transactions which they are making has to be through the technology so the technology is going to drive the entire uh, consumer experience as well and the best example that comes in my mind and most of the ceos during that interviews have told me is amazon because amazon does a fabulous job in terms of providing the seamless experience to all of us so that is where the pandemic has actually uh, changed the entire scenario of uh, the people and their usage and pattern and everything so if you talk about uh, how uh, digital natives 
will be there for uh, the post pandemic scenario just to give you a heads up on the numbers uh, 70 80 percent will of course continue doing the online shopping uh, 51 percent will increase uh, the media usage and this is very interesting to a country like india where the usage of uh, social media has become very important and that actually roots through our culture and i would like to mention that because uh, from some of the other studies, what we have found is uh, that culture is also reflected in the social media usage, which means that we belong to a particular uh, collectivistic culture. Through the collectivistic culture, we have uh, subcultures. So, for example, it could be uh, Bengali culture, or it could be, uh, you know, Maharashtrian culture, or it could be the Malian culture. So that is also rooted and we have global orientation. So that means all these cultures are the fusion which has been reflected in the usage of the social media, which has been done by the digital media. This is very interesting and unique for a country like India, because uh, I think uh, in other parts of the world, like a developed nation, when we work uh, with uh, the global team for our research, what they always say is that, you know, um, there's a very homogeneous set of digital natives there. But here in a country like India, uh, of course, we are heading towards ho homogeneous group, but still we have not acquired that particular part. So that is something which is quite interesting to know. And uh, there's an uh, increase, uh, uh, of course, by 74% in terms of uh, the online transaction. And the other part which you see over here on my slide is the value. Now, value is something which is very important for digital natives, especially in a country like India. Now, when we were uh, working on this project, which I was mentioning you about the customer services, as well as the other projects which we are working on with our global team from the US and the UK, there also what we have found is that value is something which is a very important in the entire world, but uh, for the Indian consumers, it becomes very important because they work not only on the share of wallet, but share of heart. Now, what does that mean? It means that I'm doing a transaction. Of course, when you buy products and services, the digital natives are doing a transaction, but the, their emotions and feelings are also associated with those products and uh, services, which is quite unique to a country like India. Because, uh, for example, if you have Dabur, uh, their people are having emotions with those products which they use. Patanjali is another example. And it's not only the product uses, Tata, Birlas, these are other, you know, conglomerate business that we have in India, where it is beyond the transaction. So the value is something which is uh, really important for all of us. And uh, it goes beyond the monetary aspect uh, of that particular product or the service. So that is quite unique. Another um, uh, research I would like to mention here, which was done by McKinsey. And they found that uh, any brand or a company that scores four out of five actually is doing very well uh, in India because uh, Indian consumers are really, very really demanding. And they always... Um, see how much value has been added to that product or the service. So I think um, if any country, any brand or a company scores four on five in a country like India, they are supposed to be doing very well. And uh, in a country like Japan, uh, you know, people uh, have comparatively less expectations. So there, if you just score, you know, uh, most of the brands, they score five on five because so they always feel that uh, you know, these brands and companies are doing very well there. Now, the other aspect which you see here is the consumers are turning to digital commerce, but they are also getting into uh, mindful consumption. And now this has become very important now, uh, given the situation of pandemic. Reason being, uh, besides value, people have themselves have become very mindful about what they are consuming, how they are consuming, and how the consumption pattern works. So let me explain you about mindful uh, shopping and consumption. There are three layers which has emerged. One layer is known as an individual layer where the consumer themselves think that whether this product or a service is making sense to them. Second layer is that how much 
a value addition that particular product is giving to my community and the third layer is about the society which means that if i'm going to consume this product or a service how it is going to affect the society and that is also connected to the sustainability part which is going to be there in my presentation in the subsequent slides so here are some changes which has evolved and i think they're going to stay because uh, mindful consumption was always seen in the us and there the problem so we have introduced a new model which was abcd which means that uh, acquisition buying consumption and disposition so for them in the us uh, it's not about acquiring and buying the product the problem over there was is still a disposition of the product because if i'm going to dispose my products and services it should not harm the society it should not uh, create uh, unnecessary uh, problems and issues to the people in the society and the environment so they have clearly understood that how our consumption patterns can affect the environment for that i'll give you another example like mercedes they have come up with a new car uh, where if you use that car it is going to actually help the environment now that is the level at which companies and the products are working because you know as a consumer as a digital native also you feel that yes uh, in a way after consuming the products i'm making sense i'm helping the environment and the other example i would like to tell you is that in india when we buy the airline tickets we always focus on you know uh, the timing uh, how much we have to pay and all of that so that's again boils down to the value but in the us they actually assess that what is the percentage of the carbon footprint which will be there by that particular airline after doing the assessments and the evaluations they decide whether they will go for uh, american airline or uh, some other airline so that is something which is quite interesting because uh, that is the level at which our consumers are growing so the moment consumer grows up to that level when they are so careful about the environment where they are so ca careful about uh, the society at that means that all the brands and the products have to make significant changes in order to satisfy these expectations and that is why i keep telling all my students all my colleagues and we are constantly working and doing the research the reason being digital natives are evolving every time every time and it is very important to understand what are the dynamic shifts which are happening with them and how are their behavior changing because that significantly affects your uh brands and products and the business world so with that let me give you a snapshot of what was happening before corona this will be little nostalgic for all of us because i'm sure we will we were having a blissful environment at that point of time because we used to travel we used to meet people because we are people oriented community right being part of india so let's have this nostalgic virtual journey uh before uh, covid 19 so before that uh, uh, the important aspect was of course the digital natives were empowered with the uh, internet uh, they used to use multiple screen now here i want to quote another research uh, which comes from our own country uh, like india and there what has happened is uh, it will also come in my subsequent slide first first screen is your mobile phone and then you know uh, television becomes like a passive uh, screen at the back and you always focus more on your phone you want to do your chat as you see uh, facebook twitter anything you want to access you do it this is how digital natives behave now i would like to also quote the indian digital natives especially because uh, what happens is they they have access to multiple languages when you have access to multiple languages your cognitive processing is very high which means that you are able to use multiple screen so for example even with my uh, with our mobile phone we are able to use tablet we are able to access the television and uh, we can use different screens simultaneously which doesn't happen in other part of the world and uh, that is very unique uh, to our uh, country and i think that is why the digital natives from india uh, are very different from rest of the world but the negative side of that particular behavior is that we all have become very impulsive 
So when you have access to multiple screens, you become very impulsive, which means that you want everything very uh, instantly. You know, you can't wait. So that is something which has emerged uh, as uh, digital natives behavior. Of course, you get uh, sophisticated gadgets. You always curate a lot of, um, you know, uh, product knowledge from different instances. As I was telling you, you have global orientation, you have colleagues, friends outside India, uh, from the UK, US, uh, Europe, other parts of the world. And then you have your own local friends, local communities, because you want to always be part of that community. Maybe the mode has changed. So this is quite interesting because the mode it has changed, which means that we might be using YouTube to, to have an aarti, but then the aarti should happen after a ritual. So that is quite interesting um, to follow the norms and the rituals. Uh, our channels have uh, become digital, but the ritual is still there. So we have not um, excluded our roots completely, which is quite interesting. With that, we also have the social commerce, which is the uh, integration of the e-commerce and uh, the social media platforms. And uh, that is going to stay even post uh, COVID-19 as well. So <clears throat> with that, the innovations, of course, uh, have uh, you know, uh, brought by the brands, which means that the brands are also trying to give uh, more personalized services. And a very good brand that comes uh, in our mind, of course, is Apple, that uh, of, uh, gives a lot of innovations to the uh, digital later, especially uh, though that rate of innovation that we used to have earlier from Apple has gone down, but still, you know, uh, it's always known for innovative products which have been offered. Now, uh, with that, uh, you know, this is another example which I wanted to tell you about uh, ambitiousness of the brands and the products uh, to be a little more proactive, which means that this Blue Apron is, uh, is a brand uh, based out of the US. And what they do is they provide the entire detail. So I spend like two to three months every year in the US with my co-authors to write all the papers and the books and attending the conference and all of that. This year I could not go because of this pandemic. But uh, whenever I go to the US, I have seen that they always provide detailed description about the products from where, for example, if you have like, you know, potato chips, now, from where the potato got uh, uh, in the factory, what was the status of the potato, what were, how these potatoes were used, what was the process, how much oil was used, saturated fat, unsaturated fat, amount of salt, everything will be given to the consumer. And digital natives, what they do is they go online and uh, they try to get the entire information. And I think uh, especially in the developed nation like the US, uh, they always read every single thing which has been mentioned about the product. It, uh, it, it, I have also seen like even for alcohol, like beer and everything, they have an entire docket. This was like a PhD thesis. When I went there for the first time, like, this is a menu. Yes, so you have to read everything starting from the origin of the product until how the product has leads to a table. This is quite interesting because I've seen a lot of people, what they do is uh, besides the information is curated and there in front of them, they go online, they click on, uh, they actually work with a QR code and they curate more information because they are so particular about every product that they are using. And of course, the new technology has provided, uh, you know, digital natives a new shape in terms of the innovation. Here, uh, I think the best example could be um, the game changer was UPI. Of course, that was connected with the payments because that was something which was uh, there uh, badly needed in a country like India. And that is something which I was telling you uh, before that the first screen is the mobile phone. And then that connects with everything else that we do, which includes shopping, creating content, uh, going online, chatting, socializing, uh, you know, all of that. So that is quite interesting to see. And the other point I wanted to mention was about the digital avatars, as you can see on my screen, um, that social identity. So there was another research uh, and the papers which uh, we have written on the social identity part where uh, 
the future will be that, uh, you know, how we look in the physical setting is not going to matter so much because our digital footprints are going to decide that how uh, people are and how uh, they should be on digital platforms. So that's self component. Uh, uh, recently, we wrote something on uh, narrative selves, and which means that every self uh, representation of a uh, digital native on Facebook is going to be different uh, on Twitter, it's going to be different on Instagram, it's going to be different on Facebook. What does that mean? It means that the representation of a digital native on Facebook will be different as the channel is different, as your audience is different. You want to have a different picture, different profile, different post, different content, all of that. It reflects your own identity there. This is quite interesting in terms of uh, digital natives because they want to represent themselves on all these uh, platforms. Then uh, there is another stage of info entertainment because uh, that is where the people express their views, people express their emotions. And uh, what we've also found in a country like India is that people express the emotions uh, very easily on all these social media platforms. And what is real has been reflected at least what we have uh, researched in our country. Uh, but yes, there are people, um, especially uh, interesting part was when we were actually working on housewives, what we have, uh, you know, got in our research was that housewife uh, are always being suppressed of their social needs and there's nobody who is there to listen to what is happening in their life. So what, what eventually they do is they go online, they make their own groups and they try to satisfy their social needs through digital platforms. So they have also become a digital native. So this particular part of behavior was tracked by Mintra. And I think they developed a lot of strategies around it where they actually uh, help to empower the housewives. I think that is why I keep telling my students and I would request all of you to uh, always understand, um, you know, marketing is always about empowerment which you provide to the consumers and the digital natives. And the more you provide options to digital natives, I think they become very comfortable. But the moment you say, no, you have to do this, uh, there is a retaliation saying that I don't want to do it. Why, who are you to decide? I'm going to decide. So that is something which has to be understood by the marketeers in terms of the digital natives behavior. So here are uh, like a few uh, frameworks. Uh, and I always say that the frameworks are very important because they help us to guide the behavior and uh, how we use it in our marketing of the brand. So there is a ROPO A, B, and C. Uh, it simply means that uh, you do research online and purchase uh, offline in the first category where the consumer durables. In the second category, it is more of research offline and purchase uh, online. And in the third category, I think uh, for uh, all of us where we are, it's a research online and the purchase uh, online. So that is going to stay with us. And uh, these are uh, like two or three more frameworks, which I thought would be interesting for you to know. So uh, theory of reason action actually says that uh, the key here is the attitude intention and the subjective norms. Now here, what does that mean? It means that if you want to change the behavior of a person, then subjective norms act acts a, a very important role, which means that in a culture like India, there the subjective norms are our peers, our communities, and uh, we always decide uh, while using and consuming the products, how our communities, how our peers, friends are going to think about it. This is quite interesting and it was visible that through our research, what we found that uh, uh, among women, this particular trait was seen to be more uh, prevalent because whatever they are using, they are very careful about the societal norms. So that is something that affects their behavior. So you have to be very careful here, uh, you know, whatever products that you're using, how you're using, how you're consuming, and ABCD framework, which I just mentioned, uh, plays an important role. Then gratification, of course, helps uh, all of the digital natives. This gratification for digital natives are like visual formats. Uh, they are, for example, aroma, which is there. And now the sensory brands uh, uh, and the branding has been used where we can actually do it visually. And I think McDonald's have done it. Uh, Burger King has done it. 
and uh, that actually affects the consumer uh, behavior of the digital natives. The other part is about the consumers online in the brand related activities. The only thing which comes in my mind for the co-creation part and the community development is the uh, Harley Davidson uh, group, which is how, which means that, you know, this is quite interesting. And I always cite this example to most of the audiences where I interact, uh, especially people like you all like digital natives, where you actually empower them and say that, you know, once you have done with the deal where the uh, consumer or the digital native have bought your product, that is not the end of the transaction. That is the beginning of a new journey. This is very important because the way we have been trained in marketing, including me uh, earlier conventionally, but over a period of time, we have to change and we have to come up with new concepts where uh, we say that digital natives have to be empowered. And when you're selling the product, that is not the end of the journey. That is what they do in their group. They take oath and uh, the bikes become so important for them that they become part of their life. So that is something which is very much appreciated by digital natives. So what has happened eventually in the changes in the behavior? Earlier they were consumers, then they became the contributors and then they became the creators. I would like to say another example here uh, about the brand volunteers, which means that I think it will take a while to uh, have that particular concept in a country like India, but US has already started, which means that brand volunteers are little more than brand advocates where they actually uh, you know, talk about the brands uh, take the leave, uh, be part of the board meetings, help the brand in their marketing, consumption, production, everything, because they are, they are so close to the brand. So this is unbelievable change. And digital natives, the good thing is that they are ready to help the brands if the brands empower them, if the brands respect them, and they are ready to help the companies and the brands. So they have gone beyond the creators. So what are the changes in terms of the behavior? Earlier, it was the cognition, and then we used to play with the emotions and then the behavior. Now in the digital era, uh, digital natives say that, okay, you have a lot of footprints on my Facebook, on my uh, digital platforms and all over the place. As a brand, as a company, you need to curate all of that, understand my behavior and give me relevant contextual uh, advertisement products and services. I am not going to tell you. So that means we go back to the data-driven marketing, we curate all the behavior. And I would say it is more of a thick description rather than just the numbers, because that will also uh, help us understand how these people behave into different settings, because they play with personas, which are very short-lived, which are contextual, which means that on a weekday, a digital native is going to behave in a different way. They will be eating salads from Subway or so. And on a weekend, you will find them on Domino's uh, where they can eat the pizzas. That's not the personality. That's the persona of digital natives. So that has to be understood by the brands and the companies. We should help them to understand their emotions. And then eventually their cognitive processing can be changed about the products and the brands. Now here, digital natives always say that we have to be uh, very much careful about whatever brands and now they have plethora of options. Now out of that, they have to pick up some options, right? They always say that we want to pick up those brands and products which adds value in their life. For example, if I'm using Audi, is it adding value in my life? Am I going to be praised by my community, my friends, my peers? If that is not happening, I'm not interested in your brand. So the entire marketing, branding, behavior, everything has been changed by digital native, which is quite interesting. So with that, let us talk a little bit about the during Corona uh, stage, so as to say, uh, which is more of h, &H model, which is um, home and health, health, where the two parameters which came up in a big way. Uh, and I think uh, most of around 50%, more than 50% of people still are working remotely from home. And uh, of course, they have become more concerned about their health. And that has given a lot of opportunities to the brands. The business models have changed. For example, in uh, terms of Tabor, uh, I was talking uh, before I started this uh, session 
uh, they had an increment of 9% in the net profit because they introduced the pro uh, new products, which includes Haldi Drop, Tulsi Drop, you know, immunity driven uh, products were introduced. So that is something which has uh, changed the entire behavior and quickly the changes were seen in the products that were available to us. So in terms of digital natives, as I was telling you, they, we all are still working from home and we are connected remotely. Uh, shopping and consumption, of course, is happening uh, remotely. Uh, what has emerged uh, during that time, which is quite interesting to discuss besides uh, whatever we have been discussing since uh, half an hour, is the health and the well-being. Now, well-being and health is something which has come up in a big way. When I say well-being, I would like to introduce there is a mental health well-being, there is a physical well-being, there is a social well-being, and there is a digital well-being. So there are four categories of well-being. And that has actually affected the entire digital natives because uh, you want to be socially connected. So, you know, I think yesterday only I did a, a Zoom call for, a, you know, a birthday celebration. And so that is a social well-being, which is happening. Still, you have to be connected. Still, you have to do the celebrations. There are wedding, uh, you know, instances that we do on Zoom. There are uh, memorial where... Uh, people organize all of that uh, through Zoom so that, that everything we're doing it digitally. But eventually what is happening now is uh, we will also have to be careful about the digital well-being because how many hours we are spending on all these digital platforms and gadgets. That is also going to affect the uh, mental well-being of digital natives because, and that is the reason uh, there was a recent report which says that digital natives should spend at least an hour on their hobby. And that is where you actually, when you create variations in your life, uh, you actually have a balanced kind of a mindset. So I think that is something which has emerged in a big way uh, during this pandemic. Of course, work from home, which means that everybody has uh, been working from home, uh, starting from your work, uh, shopping, playing everything, uh, and uh, usage of uh, you know YouTube channels have increased. Because now what has happened is in our earlier days, we used to focus on why is that happening? YouTube has been used extensively to understand how a certain activity needs to be done. For example, how do I uh, tie that particular uh, you know, uh, shirt or how do I fix uh, my shirt? How do I cook a particular uh, you know, recipe? All these how part, which is the know-how, which was missing, that is how the YouTube has actually helped uh, in that scenario. And face masks, of course, uh, still we all have to follow the rules and it has uh, emerged in a big way, uh, which you will see. And this has also become like a fashion statement. And uh, in uh, future, what uh, the predictions are from the McKinsey report as well, is that the uh, eye care category is going to increase uh, like anything. Because if you put up the mask also, you will be getting into the eye makeup. So that is going to remain. And that is also becoming the fashion statement as I'm sure you might have seen that. And consumption and shopping has become more mindful. That is what I was telling. And we are heading towards sustainability because I think we have to respect the environment under which uh, we are living. So here is an example of Westfield. Uh, and that is where uh, click and collect uh, format was used uh, through the driveway. Uh, this is based out of the US and they reinvented the entire shopping because the, the foot, footfalls in the malls, of course, have decreased. So that's how uh, they have the driveway. I think that was started by McDonald's. Now every brand is doing that. And uh, as uh, we all know, of course, the employment has decreased, but apparently IT companies and you all are in Bangalore. Um, you might also understand that, you know, uh, Facebook, Google, uh, and most of the IT companies, they have actually made a lot of profit because uh, their employees were working from home, their fixed costs reduced, and uh, they actually made a lot of uh, profit in that particular quarter. And uh, especially another example, which is, of course, what we are using Zoom, uh, 20 times increase in the Zoom participants. So that is quite interesting. Health and well-being, so for, uh, probably people have become more... Uh, Hygiene focus, fitness was something which was already there, but uh, I think it has come up in a big way. 
another aspect of the example which i wanted to mention was about the telemedicine so i think now you can get access to any of the medical facilities across the world and uh, probably you can get a consultation which was not uh, being seen earlier so virtual fitness at home was something which was seen and uh, hygiene factors of course for example even for like a uh, big bazaar i was discussing uh, one of the project with uh, the industry guy from big bazaar and he was mentioning that earlier uh, it was all about the products and how it has been displayed and merchandising now we have to be very careful about how it has been uh, seen as a hygiene factor by these people so that is quite interesting to know that how the behavior of the people have changed uh, especially in that particular segment and then uh, the education and the leisure part uh, is also uh, changed because uh, the lines which are been blurred between the learning and leisure because uh, the passion for learning has increased do it by yourself has increased because uh, there's no other help which uh, is there you have to do it by yourself so that is something which was always appreciated by digital natives and um, of course if you look at the entertainment part the only thing which comes in my mind is about disney i was in disney in florida and the kind of omni uh, channel experience was they provide at different touch points with technology and at that time of course i'm talking about uh, before uh, covid 19 uh, they provided the seamless experience uh, where you take a ride you reach a particular store then you you get your own picture how you were behaving what was your expression while you were on the ride all the touch points are very seamless and once you pay at the time of check in at this new uh, hotel you don't have to do anything you don't have to stand in the queue the time will be given to you that okay at 12 pm you have to take this ride you just have to they'll give you a band and then you have to wear the band on your wrist you just hit the brand, uh, band uh, take the entry of course you have to reach there on time Uh, if you're late by a minute also that won't allow you to get inside but i think the entire experience is seamless and the technology has played a significant role in it and that is what digital natives like you know so there's nobody to help you in doing all of that everything is automated and you just enjoy while you are there same thing i have seen at shanghai while i was there last year uh in disney so in terms of uh, disney's experience also it provides that omni channel kind of experience and of course the example another example for entertainment i'm sure we all use netflix and in india like 5 billion video streaming uh, is been done uh, which is amazing because the infrastructure has developed so yesterday only one of my phd student uh, was talking about her work on content uh, branded content in video advertising so there also she found the same thing that you know this is how the digital natives have changed and she collected the entire data during this pandemic the other example is about the travel here i would like to say there was another work that we are doing right now uh, on the travel bloggers uh, travel and influencers especially and what we have found is you know what is working now is the nostalgic effect because anyways people have limited travel so they want to post about it in a nostalgic way and the other thing is about the experience which is uh, more about how you have experience at different places so this is like an island uh, which is um, actually been taken by the Gro uh, gopro camera where the entire experience has been provided by uh, to the digital natives by the organizer the communication and the information has also enhanced as you look at the numbers here you will see that how uh, people have aggregated in terms of the usage of uh, digital platform so now coming to the third phase which is the post covid uh, phase here what has happened so here the consumer experience i was telling you that uh, experience is important they really don't care from where it is coming and that's why i was citing the example of disney because the experience has to be seamless it doesn't matter how your departments are connected how are they uh, doing the uh, transaction how are they communicating with each other what important is uh, aspect of digital native is that how are they providing the end uh, experience to them 
And uh, in that, uh, probably uh, what is going to happen is uh, technology is going to play a significant role, of course. But eventually, what we have also realized is that the human element will be doing more of a creative work. Human interventions will be required. Human interventions will be more required while uh, we are dealing with uh, baby boomers, traditionalists, and all that kind of, uh, you know, uh, segments and uh, there uh, probably uh, when it is not transaction driven that is where the uh, human interventions will be required in terms of the essentials i think uh, the good part is and this is what i want to mention there will be a v-shaped recovery especially in china of course in india and india is being very optimistic about uh, as compared to the rest of the world, I think we'll recover very fast in the next quarter and subsequent quarters because uh, we are very optimistic in terms of uh, the consumer sentiments, the digital natives are very much uh, pro with the technology. So that will help us to drive the country and the economy. So the next part, which is going to be there, of course, is the omni-channel effect. Here, I would like to cite an example of Gucci where actually they have uh, started a digital studio where you can actually see the uh, you know, products of Gucci and you can actually uh, share that uh, links. You can found through our research. Uh, you know, in terms of the recognition which they are getting through your brand. So that is something which is very important for them. If that doesn't work properly, LNT, where only 30% uh, of the employees will be going to office and 70% of them will be working from home, which means that uh, they are very happy at home because they can have their social life. And it also saves, uh, uh, helps the environment because as you're not commuting, uh, it is uh, helping the environment. So I think it is a win-win situation for everybody, uh, for the environment, for sustainability, for the employees, as well as for the organizations. So what digital native accept uh, and expect? So basically they will be less anxious as they are right now. They will try to create the balance, which needs to be there. And uh, they will feel more connected. They will be kind. Uh, they will be more mindful about everything that they are buying, consuming, and whether it is affecting the environment or not, that is something which they will care about. And uh, sustainability will play a very important uh, role in everything that they are doing. So here are some of the brands which I have just mentioned. I think that is something which is quite interesting, uh, which includes like Garnier, uh, where they say that take care uh, at home. And they've come up with a lot of personal care category products. Uh, KitKat, again, uh, they said, have a break, have a lockdown. And LG also said that uh, lockdowns is good. And the same thing, the the best example which I liked was about the KFC, where earlier it was finger licking, now it is finger cleaning, which is good. And that's how the brands have also changed. They've, they've showed their care and empathy towards uh, all these people and uh, the consumers. So personalization has gone up because now people are ready to share their data. People are ready to share uh, what uh, they are doing at different instances. Earlier, it was not happening. So I think that that is something which has uh, changed the entire scenario of personalization because for personalization, I was having a discussion with a lot of people and consultants who have worked in the industry, uh, especially for marketing and consumer behavior for 
more than 20 years across all the industries like airlines and everything. And they were mentioning that, you know, earlier people were reluctant to share their data. Now they are ready to share the data because they feel that uh, they will be getting more personalized services. So that is something which has changed. Now in digital well-being, I think this is the best example which we could think about. Your digital well-being will tell you like you have used uh, a technology or internet for three hours, 22 minutes, where you were on YouTube, Chrome, Gmail, all of that. So that is going to help you to understand what you are doing. So there is another project which we are working uh, on uh, with our global team and where we are talking about uh, social media addiction. Because what happens is digital natives not even realize that they are getting addicted to it, which is uh, not good for them, not good for their mental well-being. So that is something uh, which is very important. Uh, we are also studying that how uh, consumer stress can be reduced and how it can be dealt with the uh, well-being of the consumers. So in that case, uh, we would like to uh, proceed forward, which is about the consumers, uh, how they are picking up everything, uh, everything online. And then, uh, you know, they're buying online, they're picking up everything uh, from the stores and that has come up in a very big way, which is known as the BOPIS, which is buy online and pick up uh, in the stores. And that has empowered the digital natives. So I think this is going to stay. Omni-channel experience, as I have mentioned uh, to you earlier, this is going to stay. E-word of mouth publicity will be there. And I was discussing uh, with uh, all the CEOs that we are interviewing uh, that, uh, you know, the celebrities uh, value has gone down. And um, what eventually has come up is the influencer. So there are different categories of influencers which has come up the micro influencers, nano influencers, besides the celebrity influencers and the mega influencers. Now these influencers actually drives the community. So earlier they were telling me that, you know, uh, earlier it, there was a rule of 80, 20, but now what is happening is that uh, maybe this particular influencer has not bought my product and service, but I have to listen to that person because that person might have one lakh plus followers. So that is the impact of social media. That is an impact of digital media and that is driving the omni-channel shopping experience also. So it doesn't matter whether you have bought it or not, but if you are a key influencer, you have, brands have to listen to you because you're driving that, that many consumers with you. So you have to, of course, understand the weak uh, connect and the strong connect, but I think that is quite interesting because that's changing the entire ball game of the business. And it is also helping us to develop the so omni-channel strategies because especially this will be seen in retail setup. Retail is not only about, you know, the human interventions, uh, primarily with women, uh, they always like uh, that they can uh, help themselves while they are in the store, provided the technology has been there. So I think that type of experience, for example, if you're, uh, the future is, which I've seen in the US, it's going to come in India as well is that you will get all the relevant product categories based on your preferences on your iPad or maybe on your phone. And then it can be connected and digitized in such a way where you can share it with your friends, where you can actually share with anybody in the world and take a decision about the product and services. It will be more of, um, you know, and you can always have avatars, which I've seen like you, while you're using the products, you can have different type of avatars uh, while the products are there. And uh, then probably you can decide uh, which one uh, you would like to take because in that avatar, you might be looking good. And that brings me to another aspect, uh, which is the second life, where we always say that, uh, for example, L'Oreal, does an amazing work in uh, omni-channel strategy, and especially for the second life where we, they always say that, okay, this is where your avatar is, this is where you would like to look like, and uh, you know, uh, people are going for it. Like in the US, uh, you know, I've seen that uh, people are, uh, some of my friends, they were rushing home and I said, what do you have to do? They said that I have to take care of my cow. And I said, where is your cow? So they told me that it's like on the digital platform, and that's how they have to go on a particular time and to connect with that, have a virtual setup, 
and take care of their pets and cow uh, and cats and dogs and everything which is quite interesting because they, they are in second life and that's the future uh, in terms of payments of course the modes of the payment uh, will be becoming uh, emi based and technology driven which you might have seen now and it will continue i think we will have to provide friction less payments to the digital natives because the movement fractions are created and uh, in the system they really don't like that so the other part is about the sustainability where uh, people um, would really love to have the sustainable products where there is a social influence the habit will be inculcated where you're not using plastics you're not throwing it out you're not dumping it uh, you're using uh, recyclable products and uh, of course the feelings and uh, emotions are also connected uh, with that particular aspect of sustainability especially for uh, disposition in that a b c d framework and um, coming to the last part of what it would be so it will be the habit of the lifestyle which is going to be there which is for a quick recovery as i was telling you that uh, people will have a v shape recovery and because the digital natives are so much uh, optimistic about what they're doing the treat time will be there mindful consumption will continue mental hygiene of course will be there well being will continue convenience affordability and sustainability will be there and the key takeaways so the key takeaways uh, will be that the lockdown further brought people together online as we connected online personally and professionally i think that's uh, that's a good thing in education sector i think uh, we have lot of uh, you know uh, good growth rate so that we have seen and uh, then the consumers irrespective of the age and demographics have started using the social media digital platform mental well being and sustainability mindset uh, will be there which is going to stay and uh, that's the last part where uh, the spotlight of innovation will be thrive uh, tomorrow in terms of the consumers there will be co creators as i was telling you about the brand uh, volunteers that is going to emerge i've seen that uh, in terms of apple in terms of uh, lego brand i think that's where uh, the future will be uh, then the core competency will be reimagined i think that is going to uh, be a game changer for us in terms of digital natives and the behavior and how they are using the digital platforms incremental innovations will be there uh, there will be lot of uh, r&d i think the only example that comes in my mind uh, from our country is unilever so i was meeting the consumer insights head of unilever manish makhijani and he actually told me that how seamlessly you know unilever is such an amazing uh, company where the innovations are being done uh, simultaneously you know the behaviors have been tracked they are the data has been curated and it has been sent seamlessly to the r&d team so that the products and services can be worked upon uh, they can actually make changes or if required they can work on the new product so that is how the company is able to survive and then it will be more about the wellness convenience uh, of course as we discussed uh, it will be more about leveraging the ecosystem which will be very much there and the another aspect which i wanted to just mention was digital empathy so i think that is something which is quite uh, important because uh, digital empathy is uh, going to stay with us and uh, that will help us to drive the digital natives and the digital platform so that's it for me and uh, thank you so much so if you have questions i'll be ready to answer that Yes. Thank you, ma'am. It was a wonderful uh, thing. Okay, we have seen so many slides, like, and uh, lots of knowledge sharing. We thought consumer behavior with uh, demographic and the millennials, uh, generation Y, Z, but this was an entire new prospect, like digital natives, and uh, there are lots of things to study about these digital natives. There are four questions in the Q and A session, and I also have one question, like. when it comes to digital natives these uh, people like there are so many brand switching behaviors how do we identify that and like how do we stop that like what, are there any solution through customer engagement uh, 
Solutions for what? Could you please repeat? Like brand switching behavior of hmm. digital natives. How sure. We, huh? Correct. Uh, that's quite interesting and I would like to cite that I was in the US, we're doing a global study of 20 countries. And uh, this is a pattern that the loyalty and the brand switching behavior is very high among digital natives. Reason being, one, they are impulsive. Second, they want everything uh, quickly. They can't wait. Okay. And yes. the third is they always, they are very value driven. So given that particular set of mindset, which is there, and it is more exaggerated in a country like India, as I was explaining you, that uh, as we are being trained into different languages, we can access different type of screen, which means that we can curate information very quickly. And which means that we become all the more impulsive. So in order to manage that particular situation, the solution which uh, uh, comes in my mind and what we have offered is, how much value does that particular brand or a product offers to digital natives, which is again short lived, which is basis the contextual requirement, which is basis their requirement, which is short lived because it works on persona, as I was telling you, it is not their personality, which is long term impact. It is the persona because on a weekday, they are different on a weekend, they are different. Uh, in a morning settings, when they are in office, they are very different as compared to the evening when they are with their family, you know. So the companies have to understand that particular behavior and that can be understood very easily. That is what I was discussing with most of the industry experts that they've started using AI and ML to understand their uh, overall behavior, where they're putting it up into customer profiling, which earlier used to be on demographics, but now the profiling of the digital natives are on the basis of the value. Value means how much value they expect from a brand or a company to provide and their expectations and likings. So, and it's basis the psychographics. So I think lifestyle psychographics are something which are to be studied very extensively by the brands. Once you do that, they are uh, very much aligned with the brand. And I always say that mobile phone is nothing but friend in hand, you know? So if you are their friend, you understand what they are uh, uh, going through, like care and empathy is something which is required by the brand. If you come up with a fear appeal in a campaign, of course you will be distorted completely by the people. Anyways, there is so much of negativity. So that part has to be understood. If you do that correctly, then they are with you. There is a one very interesting question from a research scholar, I think so. What is the future research avenues for research scholars in consumer behavior for uh, journals? Sure. So uh, I think uh, in uh, consumer behavior for the journals, because in uh, marketing area, we have different type of journals. You have marketing journals, you have branding journals and you have consumer journals. So let us talk about the consumer journals. So I am part uh, advisory board member for the uh, consumer or uh, journal of consumer behavior. So the future lies more in understanding how the uh, digital natives or the consumers are going to deal with the machines. For example, how they would deal uh, machine to human interaction, human to machine interaction, because they are going to coexist in the ecosystem. So that is one of the big area where people are looking into. Second area where uh, research can be done is uh, about the representation of the self, which I was talking about the social identity because the digital footprints are going to decide what type of a person you are rather than, uh, you know, in the future, and I always say this to my own doctoral student, that the future is not about how do you look in the physical setting, they really don't care. But okay. how are you positioned on digital footprints are going to decide what type of a person you are. And that is something which is quite interesting because how do you present, what is your background or your mobile phone? How do you put up your uh, profile picture? How do you want to stand out from the other peers? What is the kind of the content you want to post? So the content that we post is also determined by the persona. 
So okay. that is something which is quite interesting to study. We have done some work, but I think more work is required into it. That's the second area. Mm -hmm. Third area, which is coming up in a very big way, which I was telling you was about the omni-channel experience and the consumer experience. Because the consumers and especially the digital natives, they would like to see that how these channels are actually providing them a seamless kind of experience. So when they are on Facebook, when they are on uh, you know digital platforms, or when they are on Twitter, how they are connected, how the shopping can be enhanced, how that uh, entire uh, you know worldview can be understood, how that environment can be become more seamless. I think that is the third area uh, where uh, we need a lot of work. And uh, the fourth area where we need a lot of work, which I was mentioning about, given the collectivistic nature of uh, our country and the culture uh, is about the influencer marketing and how the consumers are going to get uh, drive by the influencers of different categories and how their behavior can be changed by all of that. So these are like four uh, key areas which are coming in my mind. And uh, in okay. terms of branding, of course, uh, there are areas like sensory branding, which will come up uh, in a big way. So those uh, are the areas where you can do the research. Sure, ma'am. Thank you. And uh, there's another question asked by Professor Mudlidhar Deshpande. He wants to ask, is face tech, uh, recognition technology used for digital marketing and digital sales in your future? I think uh, he wants to talk about augmented reality or virtual. Sure. So augmented reality and virtual reality, we are doing some work uh, in the travel part of it. And that is where it's going to play a significant role. And that is what I was also mentioning that uh, augmented reality and virtual realities are going to play a significant role in providing the seamless customer experience. Because the facial expression, uh, you know, recognition is used very much while I was doing uh, the Chinese edition of my book. Uh, I actually wrote that as a case study because uh, in China, it has been used by almost every brand. So, you know, even for a, uh, for a product like cars, uh, they actually use this technologies, AR, VR, facial expression, and they just do it by themselves. So they don't have uh, any human intervention over there. So they make the booking, they go there to the facial recognition uh, technology, they have been recognized, they can open the cars, do the test drive and come back. So I think that is where the future is going to lie because uh, all the digital natives want to go through that track only. Reason being, uh, they always believe in doing everything by themselves. If they are being told by somebody, they usually don't like it. But if you tell them this is how it needs to be done, here are the guidelines, here are the steps which needs to be done. I think that is where the future is. So Volkswagen has already started using this technology in China. And I think in Asian market, uh, very soon we will see that in India as well. Uh, yet we have not explored that up to that level, but I'm sure that is going to uh, be explored very soon. So recently we had a session uh, with a person from Volkswagen and he mentioned that uh, if for a brand like Rolls-Royce, that is something which they will come up in a big way because the future of uh, digital natives are going to be with the technology in these aspects. Yes. Sure, ma'am. Thank you. Now, uh, Corona being the game changer, what are the new uh, promising entrepreneurship uh, ideas or uh, innovative uh, products, services, which the digital natives can take up? If you can. Sure. So mm -hmm. I think this is quite interesting question uh, because uh, as I was uh, discussing that there are, there are a lot of uh, businesses and organizations that have, uh, you know, uh, changed in the COVID scenario and there are a lot of opportunities also. For example, um, there is recently a business which has been started that pick up and drop, uh, maybe you've forgotten something at home and then that has to be picked up from your home and delivered at the, uh, at the office or somewhere else, wherever you are, that type of the business model have started. Then there are opportunities in e-commerce segment. So I think that has to be explored because everybody is buying online and a um, lot of companies will get into the e-commerce segment. The third category, which is coming to my mind is the uh, health and uh, hygiene factors. 
which is the hand sanitizers, mask, and uh, basically how to ensure that the hygiene factors have been taken care of because that was completely excluded, unfortunately, at least in our country. So that is something which is there, our third category. Fourth category is how many services you can provide at home, you know, because most of the people, uh, even post uh, COVID-19, uh, they will be working from home and they will be having a hybrid structure. So while you are at home, how you can entertain yourself, how, what are the services that can be provided, like fitness uh, services, online gadgets, apps, uh, so that you can take care of your health as well as your hobby, everything. So I think that is something which uh, will uh, have a significant role in terms of the business models. Uh, this would be a last question, ma'am. Uh, we have seen uh, on YouTube lots of advertisements wherein the skip option is there. Okay. Now, when the skip option is there, it, it becomes very important uh, for the advertiser to show the content within that few seconds. So, what do you have to say about it? Like, how the ad should be developed and what would be the advertising strategy? This, this is like a very attention of uh, digital natives. <laughs> no, no, this is very interesting and challenging. Yeah. Uh, and I'm seeing the webinar series with the DDB Mudra employees um, mm. across India. And that is where their biggest challenge is as our advertisers, because uh, initially, if I go back and talk about a scenario where they said, Varsha, we used to have a luxury and literally luxury to have an ad of three minutes where we used to uh, tell the entire story with the storyboard, characters, you know, all of that. But yeah. now even the digital scenario and everything is not so great in digital and especially advertisers are significantly affected because all the companies, uh, the first thing they do is they cut down their advertising budget almost by 30%. Yes. So that is something which is quite challenging. And from three minutes, they have come down to a span of five seconds. Mm -hmm. So within five seconds, how do I deliver a message? And how do I narrate a story? How do I connect with the digital natives? And how do I ensure that they have this, uh, you know, brand recall in their mind? Because it has to stay in the long-term memory. The cognitive processing has to be there. Otherwise, they will forget everything which is there. So one of the strategy eventually which advertisers have started using is that they, uh, they actually use uh, like um, uh, simple short stories that are being connected with the brands. And that those stories are connected with digital natives. So for example, one time they will show a clip of a person, a couple like, you know, going there. So I've seen that in automobiles as they have started doing it and in other categories also. And then in the second one, you will see that a single student is connected with the brand. So what happens eventually is that uh, you are delivered on other aspect of digital natives. They always want something new. So they don't want to see the campaigns again and again uh, with the same kind of message. So that gives them variety. And I'm sure uh, you all might have seen that uh, Amazon ad of or the cow or the cow. So that yeah. is something, you know, uh, which is very peculiar and very unique to a country like India, because we all we are never satisfied. We always want a variety and then we want to explore it. And this is more in terms of women because uh, explorations give them pleasure. So yes. they always want to attend that pleasure while they're shopping and uh, they want to, uh, you know, explore different variety of brands so that they are able to decide. So in order to do that, all the options are available to them. So that is the second thing which they have done. Third thing which they have, all the advertisers, uh, and you might have also seen, especially in the television advertising, now uh, since a decade or maybe more than that, we have been talking about integrated marketing communication, which means that all the channels have to be integrated together to give a unique message. Unfortunately, that was not happening, which yeah. means that if it is a McDonald's, you should get the same message on Facebook, television, uh, Twitter everywhere and television should connect you with Instagram, Twitter, every other social media channel, which was not happening. 
So that is another third change uh, which uh, has been seen in advertising because uh, everybody says that, okay, fine, I'm watching television, but I also want to get connected with Instagram and Twitter. So that is something which has come up in a very large scale. And uh, the other aspect in the last aspect, which I wanted to mention was uh, US has already started doing that, which is a real time advertising, which means that we all will get different set of ads. Maybe we are watching the same program, mm -hmm. which means that our psychographics, which I was mentioning, psychographics, demographics, everything will be uh, studied by the organizations and the brands on the basis of which, for example, if you are a fa fashion conscious person, then in that case, and you love uh, makeup and everything, those brands and the advertisements will be given to you. And if you are an automobile freak kind of or techie freak person, yes. then those kind of advertisements. And that makes sense because yes. that's where uh, we are heading. So I think we've not still reached in India. And I was talking to most of the advertisers in India that when is that time where we'll get real time advertising. But I think uh, they said it will take more, uh, maybe two, three more years to get that type of a scenario in a country like India. But I think when it comes, it will be so relevant and people will not get irritated by that. Yes, because we're doing another project on digital disengagement, especially with advertising. And what we have found is most of the time, people get irritated with the advertising because it's irrelevant, because it is not adding value. Mm -hmm. But if you do psychographics, study and the behavioral study of the digital natives and give them add only what makes sense to them that is how you're adding value yeah so and they'll be looking for those products product. yes Sorry. yeah okay thank you so much ma'am it was wonderful uh, having discussion with you with q and a session now over to narendra babu sir for out of thanks yeah. Uh, good evening, Dr. Uh, uh, it was a uh, thoroughly uh, enjoyed, uh, enjoyed uh, session and it was uh, great listening as well. Uh, the thing is like you touched upon various topics now, it includes like uh, digital natives, who are digital natives, uh, in a pandemic situation, what's happening to these uh, digital natives, how their consumer behavior has changed, uh, the technical uh, aspects of it, the culture and its influence, because we are uh, having a different culture in India. That explanation was wonderful. At the same time, uh, you gave uh, as to how three layers of mind mindful consumption towards sustainability. Uh, you also talked about the uh, uh, the uh, usage of uh, multiple screens uh, and their impact on the consumer behavior and the digital natives, how innovation for new brands and focused brand choices have been have become something very different uh, uh, in this context of digital natives. Uh, you also touched upon the concepts of uh, uh, social identity. Uh, you also talked about the, uh, the whole aspect becoming uh, digital uh, infotainment and how uh, the emotions associated with brand concepts talked about the research uh, concepts ROPO1, ROPO A, ROPO B, ROPO C, uh, which was very wonderful and very interesting as well. Uh, theoretical frameworks, obviously the TRA, uh, uh, the recent action uh, now has taken a different context. However, the, the framework remains the same, but uh, the context is different. Now, uh, you also talked about the users and uh, gratification theory as well. Uh, also, you touched upon uh, consumer online brand related activities and uh, types of behavior of digital natives like uh, consumers, contributors and creators, how, how uh, the transformation has happened towards these uh, scenarios, like how they have uh, become consumers, how they have become contributors and how they have become creators. Uh, you also touched upon many things. In fact, uh, it was it was a fully packed and amazing uh, uh, session, I should say, uh, because uh, as marketers, we all are very much aware of uh, these uh, consumer behavior aspects, but this is a different dimension altogether. In fact, we all refer to uh, your writing, your, your book uh, is very much with us in that regard. And uh, your contextual explanation on Corona, as well as the changing consumer behavior, because now we are now leaning more towards digitization and uh, how the scenarios are changing big way and how the lifestyles are changing uh, and how we need to cope up with that for the future. Now, a well-packed informative session, that's what I can term it as. Uh, thank you very much for this session. And I thank uh, you, uh, 
on all uh, uh, on behalf of all the participants and all the stakeholders at IBA. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. I think you summarized it very well. <laughs> uh, and you touched upon all the points that I was discussing. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure for to being with you all. Thank you so much for the invite. Thank you so much for uh, throwing the lights on uh, the various aspects which I covered. Um, and uh, thank you so much, everyone. It was a pleasure to be with you all. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, we want to thank host you, you thank once. You. Thanks so much. Yes. Thank you so much. We, we, would, we would definitely we want to host you once again. Yeah. <laughs> host you once again. Once this corona is done, like we'll call you to our campus. It's a green campus, <laughs> IPA campus. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so we'll much, ma'am. Have a great day. Yeah. Thank you so much. Have a great evening, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much.